Okay, so this is section 1.1 to 1.4. This is going to be example number one. And we have a beam that is supported by two rods, AB and CD. They have cross-sectional areas of 12 millimeters squared and 8 millimeters squared, respectively. If D equals 1 meter, determine the average normal stress in each rod. Sketch the stress distribution on a cross-section. Um, how would you approach this if you were given allowable stress and how to determine load? How would you? Okay, so we're going to look at working it all different ways. Okay, so we pretty much have so far that stress equals N over A. And this N is that internal axial perpendicular force. Okay, we're ignoring shear, moment, and torque because of the way we have this loaded. We can see this is a two-force member. It's only going to be in tension or compression. Okay, so stress is force over area. Um, our units are going to be uh, a pound per inch squared, or we could be in pascals, which is a newton per meter squared. So it's going to be important to keep up with our units. Okay, so we have a beam that's supported. They have cross-sectional areas. So I'm just going to go ahead and note that my area of AB equals um, 12 millimeters squared. And my area of CD equals 8 millimeters squared. Um, you're also going to have to learn how to everything needs to be signified with the, the member that I'm looking at. Because this is going to have a normal force but it's the normal force in CD. This is going to have a normal force, but it's the normal force in AB. If we had different materials, okay, that we were starting with, every, everything has to be, like we have different areas, we could have different stresses, we could have different forces, so you're going to have to just start use, uh, get used to identifying everything. So determine the average normal stress. Well, I know that stress, stress is force over area. I'm given my area like that. I want to determine stress. So if stress equals N over A, and I'm given this, and I want to find this, then somewhere is the N. The N comes from statics. Okay, the force, this internal force is always going to be from statics. So step number one, draw a free body diagram. And I can see that I have that normal force in CD. I have that normal force in AB. I have six kilonewtons at one meter, which means this has to be two meters. So I'm gonna sum my moments about A. And when I do that, I'm gonna get negative six times one plus normal CD times three equals zero. And I'm going to find that the normal force in CD equals two kilonewtons, it's positive, so I assumed correct, correctly in tension, okay? Why is that not like super focused? There we go. I can then also sum forces in the y direction. And I'm going to have normal AB minus 6 kilonewtons plus normal CD equals 0. And I will find that normal AB equals 4 kilonewtons in tension. Okay, 4 kilonewtons in tension. So I now have my normal forces. So when I'm looking at stress, if I look at just the left side, then I can see that this has got a normal force of, of four kilonewtons and it's in tension. So my stress equals normal force of AB divided by area of AB equals four, okay, Kilonewtons is times 10 to the third newtons. I'm kind of weird. I like to have everything in newtons and meters, so I'm not confused on whether I'm 10 to the third, 10 to the sixth, what does it mean? And now I have on the bottom, I have 12 millimeters squared, which means to get to meters, I have to divide it by a thousand twice because I have a millimeter. So this is a meter per millimeters, meter per millimeters. So I'm now units of meter squared on the bottom and newtons on the top. So when I find that stress in AB, I end up with 33 times 10 to the sixth. So it's a huge ginormous number, huge, 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 which is really 333, 10 to the sixth is a mega, mega pascals. Okay, so my stress in AB equals 333 megapascals. If I want to draw it acting on, okay, I've cut it. 
if I want to draw it, it's all in tension and everything is acting the same. So I'm drawing my stress in tension and I'm labeling it 333 megapascals. If I want to draw it on a stress block, so remember a stress block is just a little tiny piece of that cross section. I would draw a tension. It's right through that centroid of that block and it would also be 333 megapascals. So that would be a stress block, okay? So now I do the same thing for, oops, wrong way. I do the same thing and I have this uh, over here. And I have that internal normal force we saw was in tension. So I have this internal normal of two kilonewtons, which is two times 10 to the third newtons. So my stress of CD equals normal CD, area CD. So I have two times 10 to the, 10 to the third newtons divided by um, area of eight millimeters squared so divide it by a thousand, divide it by a thousand, and I get that the stress in CD equals um, 250 times 10 to the six, it's ginormous, Newton per meter squared. So I can take that away and call it 250 megapascals. So that would be the stress. Um, and again, I can draw a, the show that the stress is uniform. Every little fiber has that same amount of 250 megapascals. It's in tension. Or I could draw that stress block, which is just a tiny element in tension, same amount of stress. Okay. So then we talked about how could you approach this if you were given the allowable stress and had to determine the maximum load. Okay. So in this time, hey guys, I'm making a video. Seriously. Okay. So this time I am told the allowable stress, so I can still draw that same free body diagram, same free body diagram. And I know that I'm gonna have a normal CD. I'm gonna have a normal AB. This is one meter, this is two meters. And this time I'm given that maybe my allowable stress for AB is, I don't know, 400 megapascals and my area is still 12 millimeters squared. So when I look at this stress equals N over A, I now have 400 times 10 to the sixth equals normal AB divided by 12, one over a thousand, one over a thousand. So I've got to figure out what is that internal N in terms of, in terms of this load P. What is it? I do the same thing. I'm still gonna sum my moments about A, only this time, in this time, okay, I have an unknown force P. So my normal force that I get, my normal force that I get is two times P. And here I get four times P. And so this is my normal CD. So I can go back to this equation where I have that normal force and put two P in there. Okay, and then I would do the same thing. Um, well, I guess it would be, if this is AB, it would be four. Okay, but you, you just solve in terms of P. You do your statics just like you would, and you get your internal forces in terms of that unknown no, P, like that ratio that's, that's going to be in them. And then you plug that back into your stress equation and solve for P. What if I were told that it was six kilonewtons? I were told the allowable stress and I said, well, what diameter rod do I need? Same thing, I have, I have one equation, stress equals N over A. You're either gonna be given normal, you're either gonna be given a force through statics and a stress and you have to find a area, or you're gonna be given an area and a force and you're gonna have to find the stress, or you're gonna be given the stress and the area and you have to go back and calculate the statics portion. That's what I say, working it forwards, working it backwards.